Jason Ferriero. Let's go! Tony Fernandez with a Needy Wilmington. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being part of this live broadcast on this very chilly, cold morning on Friday. Uh, December the 16th. I hope you guys are doing okay. Right now it's about 65 degrees as if you're inside your house and it's close to about 45 or 40, 50 outside if you're out there, out there. Um, if you're either listening or watching me on your car, please be careful while you're driving. If you're at home, go get a cold beverage, get a hot beverage because we're going to be here hopefully to get the last remaining 10 families uh, that need to be adopted. And we're going to go through each one of the ones that there are left. We want to give thanks to the ones who adopted. So that way, um, it's a well-rounded community event that everybody participated from sharing the information and being part of what we're doing. My name is Tony. I'm one of the founders for Aiding Me Wilmington. We are a non-public community service organization, which means, of course, anything that we do comes from the kindness of our heart, not from our pockets or actually whatever's left over, um, if they're short, comes from our pockets. Uh, we help those in need just to make their lives just a little bit better. And so we want to get on here real quick to talk about Adopt-A-Pilot and Operation Pilot Wheel. Uh, thank you for TITAFC on Instagram for being part of our live broadcast. Uh, those who are not part of our um uh, any Wilmington family, uh, they're probably just watching. Thank you for being part of it on Facebook. Uh, all I can see is viewers. It doesn't say who it is. Um, so please do me a favor if you uh, can share this out with everybody that you know. So that way everybody can see uh, what we do, what's going on in our community, what we are trying to accomplish, what we have accomplished, and um, of course be part of our journey. So if you guys have noticed uh, since Thanksgiving, it seems like time just goes so, so fast when it comes around fall and winter season. Um, it just, it's it's gone so quickly where it seems like I can still remember uh, June when we were talking about seniors and graduating and senior prom and senior dues and senior pictures and all that stuff. And all of a sudden it's like, okay, back to school and here we are in the fall and winter season. Well, technically it's not winter yet. It's still considered fall until the 22nd. And then that's when it comes to um, winter. <clears throat> so if you guys have not, have you, if you guys have been following our journey since November, um, we were going to take a hiatus for the fall and winter season. Uh, after senior, well, actually technically before, um, you know, seniors graduated this year from Benning High School, which is what we're serving um, in the community, as well as their siblings from Wilmington Community Schools. And let me help you understand what that means. Because there's so many schools within the Wilmington Community District, which is part of LAUSD South, that um, we use Batting High School as a hub. Um, and also it's a benefit because the co-founder happens to be an educator at the school. And so when this came about years ago, when we started to do this year round for anything that's in, in need. Hi, Laura. Good morning. Thanks for being part of our Facebook um, live broadcast, uh, trying to get the last remaining 10 uh, families uh, adopted. And right now we're talking about um, the program and how it all comes about. So Benning High School is our hub. Uh, so that means anywhere between ninth and 12th grade. Um, these students uh, are there. Uh, their siblings, for the, for the most part, are either part of the Wilmington Community School District um, helping, uh, you know, well, not helping, but being part of the district. And so what that means is they either go to Wilmington Middle School, they go to, uh, I believe it's called, um, oh, God, I'm, I need my coffee <laughs> Broad Avenue, uh, Hawaiian Avenue, I think there's a uh, water, waterfront elementary or water. I mean, there's another name for it. I can't, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't need to get my coffee. I was ready for all this and I just, I'm all tongue tied, but you get what I'm saying. So they're, they're either early childhood, um, schools, uh, elementary schools, middle school. And so it almost benefits pretty much every student in the Wilmington Community School. Harry Bridge is another one, thank you. I, how can I miss that one? And so, um, 
we go through them. We, uh, you know, uh, it's vetted through the, you know, either the parent support group, uh, through the counselors, through the dean, uh, teachers, educators um, that care about the students, of course, even coaches and things like that. And, of course, they uh, vet out ones that they see and know and hear that they're in need. Once that's all done, even some of the students step up um, very humbly and ask, we need some help. And, you know, is there something that, you know, I can do for my family? And so they get through a vetting process. We check everything and, and, and they do their due diligence. And, of course, they make sure they, you know, whatever is there is there. Everything's crossed the T's and dot the I's and what have you. Then, of course, they go on this master list. Now, this master list, we've been doing this since 2016. And some of the students have been our same students, and some are new. Oh, my God, this thing's gotten so big over the years. This is our, this is our files since 2016 from Thanksgiving and up to current ones that we help out. Um, and some that have moved on, and now they're becoming um, ones to help out as far as, um, you know, those in need. And they come from different types of, you know, walks of life, um, situations, fragile cir cir uh, circumstances. And we're going to go through a few um, that need assistance that sometimes we just overlook and we are comfortable with it ourselves. Um, forget that there's another, uh, pretty much another life out there that doesn't have it as good. So... <clears throat> Rather than having what most people think during this type of season is of exchanging gifts and goodwill and memories and, and all this good stuff, before even thinking about that, these students and these families are just concerned about just one thing, and that's just the basic essentials. Either a jacket that's going to keep them cold, away from the elements, especially if they have to walk to school, take a bus, or if they're fortunate to get a ride with a fellow student. Um, getting something to eat in the morning before they come to school, if they're fortunate enough. Uh, if not, then they have to wait till school and they have to wait till what? Another two hours to eat something in order for them to actually start their day. Now, getting into all this, uh, and I've had gotten some, you know, feedback, comments, messages, however you want to, uh, you want to see it. And some of them were a little bit alarming. Some of them were a little bit disturbing because that's why we need to kind of like educate more. This is why we're kind of grassroots as far as what we do, as far as like really just rather than having things typed on the computer, we actually take something and write it down, put some thought behind it. And what I mean by that is that um, there's still this um, perception that the school district has it all handled that, yes, they're being taken care of or that somebody is out there <clears throat> is getting being covered and we don't need to do what we're doing <clears throat> or um, they're just saying that because they just want more. And that's not true at all. I mean, it's not true at all. And even if it was just a little bit true, and I mean just a little bit true of meaning they want a little bit of extra with, let's say, food. Or let's just say a little extra because of clothes. And this is where the common denominator as far as grassroots and just being just grounded, if, if I can say it like that. These are kids. <laughs> and so let's say, for instance, a kid is a football player that actually plays and he puts in... A 10th grader. Hi, Alexandria. Thanks for being part of our live broadcast on Instagram. Let's say this kid's a football player. He puts in 10, 12 hours of, of school, scholastics, extracurriculum, whatever. Just like any good athlete, just like any person that's trying to be in tune to have their body as a good working machine, as this person may have to walk to and from school, what have you, where do you think if they're on a fixed income, very fixed income, Way below the low poverty line, do you expect the food that they get from school is going to last? 
or it's going to last at home. Because a normal person that eats something literally may have to eat, if they're lucky or fortunate, like say you and me, we have the luxury of either going through a refrigerator two, three, four, five times a day, while somebody else doesn't have that luxury because they have to be tight with their their food in their food cabinet or in the refrigerator. And I know many will understand that. Um, and then go to school and they get this very fixed portion of whatever it is. And of course, um, the milk or juice, I don't even know if they even do both, is smaller than ever when I can remember going to school, at least it was a pint. Now it seems like it's only half a pint. And so where do you think by the time, you know, uh, throughout the day that's already used up and burned out because they're very athletic or they're very in tuned or they run or they play and these are kids and, and they use their brain power and they concentrate and they work hard and study and all that. I mean, it only lasts so long. So again, even if they were to go ahead and get a little more, it still is not going to match having a large meal or an extra large meal from a favorite restaurant compared to what a couple of dollars will give donating so they can go ahead and buy either something on sale for food for less that will last a couple of days, either go to Dollar Tree or 99 cent store, again, buy something a little bit longer that might just last an extra day, and um, just so they can go ahead and have the little extra, especially if it's, you know, requiring protein, essential vitamins and all this stuff okay so this is what it's all it's all about so it's just getting the bare essentials it's not about getting a, a gift card from itunes it's not about getting you know a, a card for points for a particular game or or what have you it's not about getting a a music itunes card for music to download this or whatever um or get coins from tiktok or whatever it's nothing like that this is just Basic, basic, basic essentials. They need undergarments. They just need deodorant. They need mouthwash. They need toothpaste. If they're lucky, cologne. If they get Old Spice or Brute. And I'm being harsh because that cologne is yuck. But anyway, you get what I'm saying, though. Just so they can feel good and smell good. Um, you know, hairbrush, things like that. And then, of course, we're talking about just all the kids that we have here. They're asking for just shirt, shoes, uh, jacket, you know, outside garments. And they don't even wear jackets like what we're supposed to wear, like, you know, outerwear. They wear something like this, and they're happy. A pair of shoes, as long as it's off the, you know, the elements of the floor being cold, and some socks. And then, of course, whatever the person donates always goes up and beyond. Everybody that we've encountered, and captains, or even ones outside the fall and winter season, that helps out, like, say, a football player, baseball player, whatever, um, extra stuff. They always give a little bit more, and so they appreciate that. Hey, Brute is not so bad. The old Brute wasn't bad. The new Brute sucks, okay, especially that they made it to a clear bottle. So the old Brute, yeah, it smelled good from Fabergé, but now um, I'm kind of a, a cologne snob, so I have all kinds of stuff. And uh, Fabergé got bought out by somebody else. So now all the colognes that we used to like really liked back in the days, uh, like Polo, it's not the same green Polo anymore. Same thing with Brute. It's not the same Brute. They, they watered it down so much that it's yuck. So that's why I'm saying if you get the old green bottle that has still that little silver chain on it, yeah, it's probably, yeah, it's pretty decent, you know, especially the days that you would go to, um, and I'm going to throw some names out there and everybody's going to say, oh my God, you're so, oh, no, that's just the name of the company. I can't help it. They went out of business. But back in the days where you would go to like, say, uh, Savon's or Osco Drug or Clark Drugs or even like a Woolworth or a Crest or whatever, and you're ready to go out and whatever, and you go there and use the tester or even open up a bottle and just just before you went out because you couldn't afford the cologne. So, you know, it, the old stuff was decent, but now it's all watered down and it's like, yuck. So that was fun for a minute. Thank you for sharing that, Laura. That was funny. Um, so 
that's what we're trying to do is get these last family members adopted. There's 10 left. When we, again, to recap, when we first started, we were not going to do anything. We were going to take a hiatus because there was so much stuff going on within my own personal life, um, mentally and, and financially, that affected me to the point where I was uh, at, how you say it, low fumes or zero. Um a lot of deaths in the family, a lot of uh, bad news in the family, uh, a lot of bad news within the family. And so it just took a toll that we were going to take a hiatus and um, not do anything. And this was after summer or actually, yeah, right after June. Um, that being said, again, um, August comes around, school starts and things like that. Everybody's trying to get back into the norm and things of trying to get things going and stuff. And then all of a sudden they have this meeting or they have this little powwow or they're sitting on their lunch break or, or they have a powwow meeting or a coffee break meeting or a coffee with somebody meeting. And then they sit down and says, okay, well, what's going on or uh, what's going on with students? What do you think that's not happening uh, that the students are not succeeding. Why would makes you think that the students are not doing well? And it's like, really? And I'm just saying this out loud. And I'm being, of course, you know, exaggerating because, you know, COVID was a very hard thing to go through. I was part of it. I was part of the, uh, when the problem was there, we were there to part of, be part of the solution. And we're still there going through it even after post. Um, but I'm being, uh, I'm just being exaggerated about as far as when you have something like that going on during that time, and then now after the fact adjusting, what makes you think it's going to be a quick fix going back into August, right after post of COVID? Uh, just like anybody who gets sick, it takes time to get back into the swing of things. If you get injured, it takes a minute to get back into the swing of things. If you are changing formats of a way of you living, it takes time to adjust. Um, if you get a new computer, you get a new software, it's going to take a minute for you to understand it and, and, and read the language and, and see what you're getting into. Your, your job is changing from analog to a more moderate, streamlined computer system. Okay, so now you're going to have to learn something. It takes a time. It takes an adjustment. It takes, you know a period of, of, you know, still making mistakes and still having not everything perfect. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. And a lot of these families, their, their breadwinner is still working on a skeleton crew, not a full-time job, working 30 hours because they're cutting their benefits. Or there's somebody out there now has to take care of somebody else because mom, dad, or grandma, or grandpa, or uncle, or aunt, uh, or even older uh, older nephew or niece is going through something really bad and you're not going to just throw them to the street. They're going to sit there and step up and take care of them so it's an extra amount to feed. It's more stuff you have to get. It's, you know, just the basic stuff, just to have a roof over their head, have a clean body, um, eat, just eat something, whether it's just beans and cheese, and, and that's even cheese is a luxury, just to get through. So these are the same thing with these families. So these families are still still hurting because they're doing what they need to do as far as making sure the kids in school, they have some kind of clothes on their back. It may not be top drawer. Uh, it may not be, you know, um, Ralph Market. It may not be, you know, Vons. It may, you know, it's Dollar Tree, 99 cent store. And there's nothing wrong with that because all it is is just overstock a lot of their stuff anyway. Uh, or Big Lots or whatever stuff just to eat in the cupboard. So they, during the holiday, it always seems to be like the little extras, you know, especially when they take a break, they're, not, they're no longer there anymore. So they're not at school to get the breakfast, they're not there to get the lunch, so what do they do? So they're stuck. And of course, the grab-and-goes have ceased. They're not doing a grab-and-go. Again, I have not got any word if they're going to do a grab-and-go um, since, um, since COVID. Um, so... Thanksgiving, we stepped up and gave an extra box or an extra gift card to hold them for the week that they're on break. Um, but um, doing the same thing for the Christmas. So we have 10 families that we're going through that need help. I know it's a hard task to do. It's hard. But 
don't look at it as how hard the task is. Don't look at it as how big it is. It's like, let's take a little bit of pieces. So as I mentioned before, yes, the families that are left um, are large families. They're either nine or eight. And we have actually have one that's 12. So technically, that's a multifamily, multi-generational household, okay? But you don't have to do it alone. There's solutions, guys. If I'm sitting here doing this, uh, the kindness of my heart, and I don't have a pot to piss in and one to throw out of, and I'm here doing this, there's a solution that could be done for this. So you could either be as a captain, what I mean by captain because of the mascot, we call them the pilots, the little pilots, the students are pilots. Captains take the, 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 the voyage, which of course this event grabs the wheel and says, I'm going to sit there and handle this so you guys can get through this very tough time through the fall and winter season. So that's the, 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 the metaphor we're going with. Now, you don't have to do it alone, just like any good crew. You can get, you know, you got a, someone who runs the deck. You have somebody that runs the galley. You have somebody who runs this. It's the same thing. You can get family members. You can get friends. You can get people that you know at work. I have people on my list that went up and beyond, meaning that they had not just their families help out, but they had their friends help out getting gifts for the ones who are, you know, asking for either shirt, clothes, socks, undergarments, whatever. Now, this is the thing that me, many people feel it's, a, it's either a need or a want. If you just want to help out, then just do the bare minimum. There's nothing wrong with that. Just do the bare minimum, and they're happy to get it because it was something they weren't even going to get anyway. These families do not know they're going to get adopted yet. So if they don't get adopted, there's no disappointment. It's a hope that they would get adopted so that way there'll be something there. And then what we do is at least provide them a gift card regardless. So if they don't get adopted, then we at least we provide them enough gift cards to hold for food. But they don't count on or know that they're going to get adopted until they get adopted. So there's no hard feelings and no one gets hurt. But again... That's the one scenario. If you take the family, you want to adopt and do it with somebody, help somebody out. There's either, you know, like I said, we had, let me see, one. And this is even the school. The school teachers that worked there. Hi, Patsy. How are you? Good time. I haven't seen you in a minute. Thank you for being part of our Facebook. I hope everything is well. You're looking good. Be Continue doing yourself. Be you, girl. Thank you so much for taking time this morning. <clears throat> We're live on Facebook and Instagram trying to get these last 10 families adopted. Um, actually, I have to update because it says 10. Actually, it's nine. It's actually nine families left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, because someone adopted another one. So technically, from 10, it's to nine. So um, give me a second because somebody's here. It's going to go blank for a second. I got to go. Someone's in my house and I got to say something real quick. And I'll explain to you guys why I have this big old rack right here because something happened in the house. So give me two minutes. I'm going to do like that Chuck Woolery guy from Love Connection. I'll be back in two and two. Just give me a second. All right. Thank you. I hope you guys didn't disappear on me because I know you're like, wait a minute, he was there and now he disappeared. But I did say I was going to be back in two and two. So 
here I am. It's going to be like one of those little bit long videos, but hopefully not too long to bore you guys to get off my life. So the reason why the rack is right here and my whole office is upside down is that we had a really bad situation here at the house and we had to take care of it. Luckily, I caught it and remedied it. So, um, so everything is good. Now we're trying to put everything back together and still with all everything going on, uh, get this going. So anyway, so <clears throat> as I mentioned with the families, we had one family member with their family take two families and technically almost four or six members of their family are helping out all putting themselves together, whether it be money, shopping, gift cards, and then wrapping everything up to help out one family. We literally have one, two, three, four teachers, technically five teachers or counselors went and took a student and is helping out the same thing as everybody. So even teachers that don't have enough to um, make their ends meet because everybody knows the teachers go up and beyond what they have to do with their fixed income. They took on a student and helped out adopting one and then getting them all situated uh, with whatever they need and a little bit extra during the holiday. So we literally have, as I mentioned, from Banning High School, teachers and counselors stepping up to, to help out. We have at least three, four, even maybe five families. They're alum, I mean, captains who are alumni took a family member to help those out. So that way they know how hard it was when they were students um, and now how hard it is experiencing now. So all of these individuals are possible to do something like this. You can too. <clears throat> Hi, Naha, Naha 71. Thank you for being part of our live broadcast on Instagram. We're trying to get the last remaining nine families uh, adopted. So that way they can be um, situated, happy, something under the tree. So that way they can be that the community is thinking about them. That if they are just going through a very hard time, it will get better. Um, you know, things are going to turn around. So, you know, someone is looking out for you. Someone's thinking about you, especially as somebody that's not there in your life that you may not know them, uh, cares about you. So the other way you guys can do it is also make a donation. Now, everybody thinks of it this way. Some people think about that way. Some people figure and change their mind the other way. Everybody has their own process and you guys would completely respect, I mean, with all respect, do whatever you want because of course it's your money but i'm just saying a small analogy of that if everybody was to give a little bit whether it be a couple of dollars a dollar or two then we can sit there and just go on and would have without having to like literally you know beg to to make this happen now what i mean by that and is that is that there's there's always should be <clears throat> a little bit of good in all of us to do something whether it's monetary or just just do it from because what you what you have at home, and so what I mean by that is if you can sit there and spend eight nine dollars on a cup of coffee to a corporate conglomerate on any level because there's more than one so it's not like I'm I'm picking on one particular conglomerate. Hi Elizabeth Vargas, thank you for being part of our live broadcast on Facebook. Then why don't you just do me a favor, do the community a favor, do these families a favor, and get something at this local donut shop. And take the remaining three, four dollars and donate it to what they are going to just need is just a day or two of food or, uh, you know, one shirt, one blouse, one pair of pants. And we're talking about just regular clothes. I mean, from two or three people that donate, whether it be one dollar, five dollars, whatever. We we get the gift cards from either Ross, Burlington Co. Factory, TJ Maxx, Marshalls. Because you get more for your buck going through those spots. So it's not like we're saying we're going to go to JCPenney. And if you're lucky to find something on sale, even though they do have a lot of stuff on sale going on, it's more sensible to be, and I think they also one called Didi's, Didi's Discount, which I didn't know that they're part of another company. So I didn't, didn't know that. And I guess they have neat stuff too. So they can go ahead and get what they really wanted. And especially if they get money or, you know, a card from they can multiply with that and then maximize what they want to get. So, 
And of course, we go get the, gro the grocery cards from Food for Less because they have a lot of good sales, a lot of good pricing and things like that. And that way um, we can um, help out. So I'm going to go here and see if we have any information anybody are going to be wanting to adopt or make a donation. So we're going to check and see what's going on and see where we at here. Okay, so nothing on that one, which is okay. It's still early in the morning. Let's check this one. If you guys don't know, we have three platforms that you can donate you can go through cash app you can go through venmo and you can go through paypal and that the only reason to, those are easy to do because everybody else charges more money and they charge a percentage and not everybody gets you know that it's it's quicker that way we can just put it to the account and then we go get the money out and go get the cards today tomorrow and until next week if you guys have not noticed, we extended everything till Tuesday because we are down to the last nine families. So if you guys have not gone to the website, and of course I can check if somebody goes to the website because I get a notification when someone goes to the webpage. We had, we had a lot of people inquire and look at it, but everybody gets shocked at watching how many members, how many families here are in need and that's what's different than what and i'm and there's nothing wrong with what everybody else does okay everybody else is doing a pop-up they're giving everything they have and they go to somebody else and things like that they're getting a toy they're getting snacks they're getting food and what have you there's nothing wrong with that this is the other coin this is the other caveat these are the ones that are either have mental concerns they're in a fragile situation they have somebody at home they cannot leave unattended. There's somebody who's working, so the other person has to care for the person, has to care for, you know. And the thing is, like, well, you're just saying all this kind of stuff just to go ahead and make the situation. No, it's not. It's, it is what it is. It's black and white. It has nothing to do with I'm just trying to make it more what it is. It's almost like saying this is something you don't want to talk about at the dinner table. It is what it is. This is exactly what's going on. And these are the people that need help because they can't. And, you know, they don't have that outlet. They don't have that opportunity to, to do it. And so doing this, even with doing this, we still have them uh, either come to the school to pick up the stuff or uh, we have arrangements. If they would open to it, the one who adopts them takes it to them or we will take it to them. So we started out with just... Uh, 30 students, 184 members, and then we had three more. Um, eight days later, technically a week later, that we just couldn't say no. They were in such a bad situation. Uh, one I can tell you was um, um, so rather than being a mom and dad. Dad had to uh, step up and be the only caretaker, the only person taking care of a family of, um, let's see, how many are there? Uh, give me a second, I can tell you, because that's why we're doing this, guys. So that way, whatever um, information we can talk about, um, we're going to talk about. Okay, so like, for instance, this was LL. So if you go to the webpage, LL's a six-member family. So it's two parents in the household. Father's out of work, low income, two adults and four kids. So this is a fam This is one of the family members that we had. We added um, that he just got told that he's going to be out of work. And a lot of companies are doing this. They always, even including me, uh, during this time, they always downsize. They slow down. You know, slappage. Even at the docks is slowing down right now. And so. Um, for this, you know, for this, this is the reason why we just couldn't say no, because as it is, they already were considered a low income family, barely getting by, barely, you know, paying rent, paying bills. And what I mean by paying rent, paying bills, 
I'm not talking about paying on time. They pay late, okay? They're just like, so for instance, whatever they paid, maybe what they need to pay for the first of the month doesn't get paid to the fifth or the tenth of the month, but they pay. So that means they're just really, really struggling and just not able to get by. So we just cannot tell them no. Um, let's see what the other family member is. This one's KK. Okay, this was a two-parent home, two adults and three kids on a very strong, uh, low income. Hi, Monica. Thank you for being part of our live broadcast on Facebook. Um, so this is a five-member, two-parent home, low income, need assistance. So this particular family, uh, again, is one of the one of the three that we uh, couldn't say no to, and uh, they just had their. Um, income that they count on on what they normally would budget and they got their hours cut so they need help to help those three kids get through the holidays so that way they can have a christmas they can have an extra little bit of food so that way um they can you know get through the very difficult um winter season the other family that we have is family aa it's a seven member family it's a two-parent household multi-family household so pretty much what that means is that it's a two-parent household and they're caring for grandma or grandpa, uncle or aunt, or even nephew and niece. Uh, of course, it's either mom and dad of, of either the wife or the, or the father or the husband and the wife. You get what I'm saying? And then, of course, taking care of their three kids. So rather than putting them in a home, rather than maybe something happened, maybe it was a medical condition, because like I said, some of the circumstances are very fragile. We, we're we lucky to get what we have as far as information. Uh, and so they trust us. They're humble that they are, you know, they stepping up. They need help. They acknowledge they need help. So um, that's why we have that information for that. Family Z, a two-parent household, uh, two adults, four children. Uh, low income need assistance during the holiday. Again, this is one of another family that just got their hours cut. They got their hours reduced. Um, they barely make it as it is now during the holiday where, you know, the kids are going to be home. They don't have access to food uh, where they get breakfast or lunch. They're minimum to what they have. And again, um, they just need a little bit of help during the season. Now, something that I want to talk about because I know for a fact this would and you guys you know a lot of things that we do here is there's like um the old saying goes sometimes it's an unthankful job or sometimes it's a uh it's more of a burden than a reward not that what what I'm saying is what we're doing I'm just saying when you get comments or you know people send you stuff and unfortunately some of these uh informations that we get are really smart because they use either Proton Mail or they use a dummy account where I can't trace who it is. Um, uh, so they make these comments, you know, uh, about, well, they're not really hurting. They just look like that. Or they think they're, you know, they just tell you that so you can get something more. And um, that's not so. And this is the reason why. And I'm and I, it's in, if you guys go to the web page, it's it tells you all these Q and A's or FAQs, you know, frequent asked questions. Why that people you know should or like to help out, or you know why that we do what we do. And this is the reason why because you know you get you get the, the reasons like why are you doing this or why are you having this done or why you do you know it's instead of just having out there the ones who are willing to do it great and if, if you don't want to do it that's okay too we're not asking you we're not turning your your you know twisting your arm to do it uh this is just something but we always get those um karens or kevins uh that always say something and they um don't seem to understand and what i mean by that is that when the, um i'm trying to find the the language so give me a second because it's on the page Give me a second. Uh, um, self care. Mm. 
Okay, here we go. So when people ask about the circumstance, a lot a lot of the people look at them. They say they don't seem to be appear to be poor, or they don't seem to be having a burden or going through some kind of cost of devastation or having a health problem. Well, that's pretty much like reading the book by its cover and not knowing what's inside of it. So the reason you know we cover those kind of questions is because it gets asked a lot. The last couple of days, a lot. They'll go in there. They act interested. They tell me, you know, and and I don't know who they are until you know, because they go through my um, web um, uh, the website's chat, and so this is what we answer. So we say many of the um, uh, of the either single parents or you know mom and dad parents, uh, regardless of the reason for the family's need. Um, may appear to be not going through a circumstance, but what they're dealing with are problems of unemployment or some kind of illness or some kind of luckless condition. So some of those appear may not appear to be poor, but may be burdened with the cost of devastating of health problems. And maybe some of them are even single parents um, taking care of their family. Hi, uh, I, uh, MDC, that's me on Instagram. Thank you for being part of our live broadcast. Love, love the sunshine. Thank you so much for being part of our Instagram um, live broadcast. So we're going over the last families that we have. We have nine families. We're hoping to get them adopted. If not adopted, just make a small donation. One dollar will make the biggest difference. And... If everyone was to donate a dollar, it would be great. Now, everybody seems to think that is, if you guys have seen it, of course, anywhere you guys go, when they ask for a donation, we ask for a small $5 donation. We ask for a small $10 donation. We ask, we don't, we don't do that. We never had done that. Unless it's something fixed, which means by like, you know, if it's somebody who needs a new cheerleading outfit someone needs new pair of cleats or whatever, and we're trying to do it quickly. And so rather than having the burden of one donating X amount of money for, for whatever that item is for the student or for the event, like senior prom or whatever, we ask everybody to donate X, X amount. So like $5 or $10 um, to make this you know a lot quicker and to get the need quick. Other than that, something like this, we just say donate as little as a dollar. Every, every platform, you can donate $1. I tested it myself, okay? So either Cash App or PayPal or Venmo, you can donate $1. So donate dollars, a small dollar, and if everybody was to do that, we would be good. Every person that we averaged for the gift, either for the shirt or a jacket or a pants or undergarments um, or sleepwear or a pair of shoes, we average it somewhere between forty and forty-five dollars for each one, and that's basically again from either Ross, Marshalls, TJ Maxx, uh, DD Discounts. Um, they get a good deal. They have name brands. They have closeouts. I sound like a, a Ross commercial, <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, and 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 I shop there, so it's really cool stuff. But that being said, it gets them what they need. And even stylish and all that cool stuff. And if everybody was to chip in a dollar, so let's say, for instance, even if I, and I'm being realistic, not everybody chips in a dollar. They'll chip in five. They'll chip in, you know, what have you. So can you imagine five people donate $5 or eight people donate $5? You already have a gift for that one person, for that one family member. Same thing with the, with the food. So when we get a gift card, we average the gift card for the meal between 10 and $12. So $10 to $12 for each meal. Uh, on an average, everybody gives a little bit more. Um, we get a gift card for like $100. If it's a larger family, we'll get, you know, 125 150 uh, So again, if everyone was to just donate $1, can you imagine how much we can do if we did that? It's been a little longer process. It's a little bit longer as far as getting it out there, getting everybody to, to donate. Again, everybody is going through something. Everybody is hurting. Everybody is trying to recover from, um, you know, COVID still and what have you. 
But um, even me, because I'm like I said, I went. Through, I'm going through a, a mental and financial uh, during a long period as well. So the best way that we can do that and try to have some kind of normalcy is to self care. So if you sit there and think about less of yourself for one minute and feel that you can overcome that, how hard to go overcome that. And then if you gave that energy to something else and able to reward somebody with that, then it makes the whole difference. And then because then you know that you were able to empower yourself and help somebody else that has a situation either equal or less than you or more than you, excuse me. So um, that's, you know, a good good thing. And that's what helped, what kind of helped me through through all this because I pretty much, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Recharged myself because of what, you know, I got burned out from everything that was going through the holiday and things like that. Um, from, you know, all the other events during COVID, nonstop, literally seven days a week, my phone not stopping. I had to get another cell phone because my phone just rang so much from everybody needing something. Um, so I totally understand. I totally get it. And, uh, and that's the reason why we do these events. This is the reason why we do these kind of events, especially from the school, because if I could think, if I was to go back as a child, because my dad and my mom did not have the best relationship. And I know for a fact, a lot of it was financial. And then my mom had to be the, the, the person taking care of us and we were on welfare. And we had to go through the difficulties of sending that stupid form every month and, and waiting for that, uh, you know, the day of the month to go get something, you know, to get the food stamps, to go get something to eat. You know, of course, we didn't know any of that stuff until we got older. And then, of course, getting a job and then, you know, helping, you know, helping my mom out and, and doing that. But being naive, thinking that everything was just never going to get better. It, it puts a perspective as far as what these kids are going through, what their families are going through. So if they were able to get just a little bit of help, just take a little bit of pressure off take a little bit of the edge of like kids worrying about something under the tree this year, uh, having a little bit extra that they're able to eat something, um, not worrying about vacation. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Patties. I really appreciate that. Yeah, that's the kind of energy I need. I really appreciate that. That really means a lot to me. If somebody that does not know me that well, Patsy is one of them. She knows who I am. Um, and, and knows what we do and what I do and things. Of course, she probably knows my Catherine a lot better than, than me. Um, when things when things seem to be that much difficult, there's things that are also possible. So what I mean by that is that you get lemon, you make lemonade, but add strawberry, if that makes any sense. Just do something a little bit, little bit more than what you do status quo. And that's why we try to do what we do with what we're trying to do with LAUSD, you know, and at the same time, you try to not to be in the political realm about that because we, because of what we do, if you go to their website and you even go to our Facebook and on an Instagram or even our website, webpage, you'll see this program they're accredited. It's called WASC. It's called something, blah, blah, blah. Some accreditation that you need to have in order to say you're the better, uh, better school with the curriculum and with the language and you know it's not like the simple thing of saying read write arithmetic it's all this analogy of it's almost like psychology psycho analyzing why a kid cannot do as well as they should in school when technically if you don't have the basic necessities again it's more than just above the notebook, pencil, paper kind of deal. Is that they don't have a snack, if they don't get to eat, if they don't have some clothes without holes in it, if they're afraid, if they don't have a way to get to school without being fatigued and tired and hungry, how do you want them to sit in school and pay attention to what instructor is saying to them for the six, seven, eight hours of school? So, you know, it's like uh, we're trying to educate, stop overanalyzing, stop making it so difficult and just do the bare essentials. 
you know, just do the bare essentials, and then that way you go above the status quo. So back to what I was talking about the WASC, is that luck, uh, when they applied for this for their accreditation, we were very, very fortunate to be thought of and for being a small nonprofit community service organization, barely coming out of the out of the the network in 2016, they put us down as part of the well roundness of what a student can do better at because of the Hope Closet, which is helping the pilots excel with all kinds of things from notebooks to um, things they may need, basic shampoo, conditioner, mouthwash, toothbrush, toothpaste, snacks, juice boxes, Capri Suns, pencil, paper, notebooks, uh, calculators, Texas Instruments, scientific calculators, uh, notebook binders, notebook paper, construction paper, crayons, markers, whatever. Um, um, uh, prom pilot for the seniors when they go to prom. And what was the other program they put in there? Oh, our uh, back to school, back to school with a pilot. That's a big deal. And still, unfortunately, a lot of people on Baldry Avenue and LAUSD still don't look at it. Don't look at us. But that's okay. We're still waiting for the door to knock. And so we keep doing what we need to do. We keep educating. We keep pushing. And eventually we're going to be part of whatever circle um, to let them know, um, stop overthinking and just do the basic the essentials and everything else will take care of itself. Um and here's a perfect example, because unfortunately what I found out, the district was trying to help. Of course they try to help. I'm not going to sit there badger. I'm not going to sit here and badmouth anybody. That's not what we do, and that's not our intentions or anything. The thing is, when you know that this, there's something there, when you know that they have it, and you just don't, and if you don't let it go, you're almost a Scrooge, because it's almost like you're waiting for the rainy day to happen, but guess what? The dam broke, the thunderstorm is here, the water is running down, you need to start touching it. Here's the point. You have XYZ of schools in the LA Unified School District, okay? And, of course, every school has students that are in, that are in need, okay? All right. And this is a simple concept that we did in Southgate. I went to Southgate High School, okay? I'm a class of 83, I'm a ram. Sorry, I'm not a pilot. But I am an honorary pilot from what most people say because of what we do. So thank you so much for that. But my point is this. If you were to sit there and adopt a family, this is how simple it is. With all the teachers you have in the school, with all the administrators you have in the school, we're not talking about a family of 100. We're just talking about just Bear, just status quo, okay? We're just doing simple, and we're going to close because, like I told you, I'm going to be talking my head off, but it's almost 9 o'clock. I've been here for since 8, and I will close it down so you guys can rejuvenate and um, get your bearings, okay? And then hopefully we'll get some good news later in the day, and we'll keep you updated. But if every teacher, counselor, principal, assistant principal did this footwork, it will work. That's how simple it is. You know that kids are coming back to school in August. You know that you're going to have family in need during fall and winter. You either do one or two things. You either have a coffee can that you can put in whatever change, whatever money you want toward adopting X amount of families. Okay? Two, three, four, five, whatever. And you know for a fact a dollar can go a long way uh, the village won't come if everybody donated one dollar. Okay, you do it for Thanksgiving, you do it for Christmas. You have enough money there, basic on how many employees you have, basically thirty days in the month, basically. Well, I'm not including Saturday and Sunday. Let's. I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. Um, and they can adopt a family of you'd say three or four family members exactly what we're doing, a family of four or five or six, and the district now can actually adopt a family for every school in the district. It's not that hard. 
Okay, it's not that hard. But unfortunately, when I found out that nobody is getting adopted from the school this year. And that's sad. That's really, really sad because at the end of the day, you expect the kids to do well in school. You expect them to come to school on time. You expect them to have all their, you know, T's and I's ready, you know, cross the T's, dot the I's, and get ready to work. But when you don't have, it is a public school, so that means technically you have to start developing new things in order for the, you know, for everything to work from whether it's a new lunch service or food service to whatever program like you're doing. You sit here breaking your brains on curriculum and accreditation and psychoanalyzing everybody, why they're not doing it. It's the same thing. If you don't have the basic necessities, you don't have, it's like if we don't have power, you don't have lights, you don't have this, you can't have a school. Well, it's the same thing. If you don't have basic stuff, which we used to have back in my day in school, you will not succeed. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. All right. It's 856. We're going to close it down. Thank you so much for everybody who stuck with me and hear what I had to say. Share this out with everybody so that way they can be falling asleep as well so you can make them say this is better than melatonin. This is considered better than audiobooks. It's guaranteed to make you sleep if you listen to this guy for about 15, 20 minutes. Or <laughs> But you guys are too kind and thank you for the comments. Thank you for everybody who's... Um, adopted we're gonna put i'm gonna put that information out there so make sure you guys are hitting the comments and letting them know thank you for stepping up uh no easy task uh, during post-covid uh to adopt a family especially adopting more than one family uh also for the ones who donated money uh you know everybody's got bills to pay everybody's got to eat and they still went out and donated to to uh help uh, offset whatever don't get adopted to get them a gift card and things like that. I joined late. What school is this? Banning. Banning High School. And the Wilmington Community Schools. Um, if you're talking about what school I went to, I went to Southgate. I went to Southgate, class of 83, part of the LA Unified School District as well. So. And that's one of our um, captains there, Dar D A R S L S on Instagram. So we're going to shut down. Watch the reruns, guys. You know, if you guys need. Uh, something fall asleep. Listen to my voice for the next one hour by rewatching it again. Put headphones on; it'll make you go to sleep. <laughs> I had to say things like this because that's the a little bit of entertainment you get when you hear me speak. Rather than being a motivational speaker or getting you guys to engage, I a sleep coach helping you go to sleep by listening to me <laughs> for an hour. <laughs> If you have difficulty sleeping, watch this guy on, on on social media. He'll make you go to sleep. I've had people say that I can talk and make people sleep. It's almost like hearing somebody say, okay, you're in a dark room. Your eyes are getting heavy. No, it's not like that at all. Now I'm being silly. All right. Okay, so look for the good news, guys, later. Hopefully that we guys get the rest of these people adopted. We're shutting down on Tuesday. And then anything that's left over, we'll just get whatever monetary donations and then help them get gift cards. And let's have everybody have a good holiday. Thank you for being part of the best thing. What we do is have a unity community. If you guys are just joining in, watch the, the replays. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much again for putting up and watching me and listening to me this early morning on Friday. Be safe. Be good to one another. Talk to you guys later.